I'm Bob Mills um, and I'm a lecturer in the History of Art Department at UCL um, and I'm currently working on medieval representations of sodomy. Priests in the Middle Ages expressed concerns about giving the game away, about telling people about previously unheard of practices. And so despite those prescriptions against um, talking about sodomy in medieval texts, some artists did try to find ways to visualise this um, sin that would otherwise be characterised as unspeakable or unmentionable, um, or what was sometimes known in the period as um, um, a sin against nature. Now one of the strategies at artists' disposal was classical mythology. That was a way of rendering visible what otherwise would be too sexually explicit for Christian audiences. So you could go back to stories from the classical past um, and use them as a way of confronting obliquely um, the sexual practices associated um, with sodomy. <laughs> The myth of Ganymede, who was a youth who was um, abducted by the god Jupiter and was forced to become his cupbearer in heaven, um, was especially significant in this regard. Um, and Ganymede is shown um, in a 12th century stone capital in the abbey of Vaisalay in Burgundy, being snatched up by an eagle um, because Jupiter assumes the form of an eagle in order to abduct Ganymede. Um, while a snarling devil is um, standing alongside um, um, egging Jupiter on from the sidelines. Um, and Ganymede doesn't seem in this particular carving to be very pleased about what's happening to him. Um, medieval artists could also make reference obliquely to the practices associated with sodomy while also alluding to other sins of the flesh, things like overeating, violence or inhospitality that medieval theologians suggested had led to the destruction of Sodom um, in the book of Genesis in the Bible. Here's an example also from a manuscript in the British Library, which is called the Edgerton Genesis, which shows all these various sins taking place within the walls of the city of Sodom. And some late medieval paintings of hell were even more explicit showing sodomites being spit-roasted by devils um, who are roasting them over the infernal flames. Or the sinners could, as in a fascinating scene from the west front of Lincoln Cathedral and um, on the 12th century frieze there, they could be shown being forced by monsters to um, participate um, in acts of sodomy, to um, effectively re-sodomise one another in hell against their Will. Now the Lincoln Freeze um, carving which I'm referring to is now quite damaged but a, a restored version of the carving was um, put in place um, on the west front of the cathedral in 2001 um, which um, enables us to imagine what medieval people would have seen when they saw the carving back in the 12th century and we see two almost identical figures, probably both male, who um, are being um, forced um, to have sexual relations with one another. Um, their hair is being pulled, there's a monster um, sitting um, behind them um, who seems to be forcing them um, into this act. I became interested in this topic having worked previously um, on representations of punishment in the Middle Ages. Um, and um, I came across the images of um, spit-roasted sodomites in that context when I was looking at afterlife imagery and specifically images of hell as part of Last Judgment scenes. And so it interested me because I didn't see that anyone had really thought about these images in any great depth or detail or thought about them together and thought about what's at stake in visualising something that technically is meant to be unspeakable or unmentionable. So there seems to be a sort of paradox there. On the one hand, something is unmentionable. On the other hand, um, it's spoken about voluminously and also, in certain contexts, visualised. And so I wanted to understand what was actually going on in that configuration. Mm -hmm.